Hey there, Python trainer Ruben Lerner here. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about Unicode and Python. Now, this is a really big subject. We are not going to get super, super deep into it, but I do want to give you some of the basic tools we can use in Python for working with Unicode characters. So let's say I have a string here, S equals A, B, C, D, E. And I want to know the Unicode numbers, the code points for the characters in S. Well, that's actually pretty easy to do. I could say for one character in S, say print ord of one character. And that's fantastic. And now what are these numbers? What are these ord numbers? Back when I was little, all we had on our computers were, was English. And so we only had ASCII. And these are what I would still call, because I'm a bit of a dinosaur, I'd still call the ASCII codes, the ASCII numbers, meaning, meaning every single character in English was given, along with a few symbols, was given a unique number. So lowercase a was 97, lowercase b was 98, uppercase a was 65, space was 32, and a whole bunch of others, from 0 through 127. And those was the, that was the ASCII code. And so you could basically ask any character, hey, what code are you? So I can say, like, what's the ord of the dollar sign? That's 36. What's the ord of the left parenthesis? And that's 40, and so on and so forth. What's the ord of, I'm just going to do one more here, capital Z, and that's going to be 90. So basically, every single character that we could use in English in ASCII had its own ASCII code. And that was from, as I said, from 0 to 127. Now, that was enough space for ASCII, which meant Latin characters, English basically, lowercase, uppercase, some symbols, and some control characters. But it was not nearly enough for all the languages of the world. Unicode does try to handle all of the languages of the world. Um, from what I understand, it doesn't do all the characters of all the languages, but it does a really, really good job for an awful lot of them. And so now, if I were to say like S equals, not something in English, but I'm going to type in Hebrew, Shalom. So now I can say the len of S is four. And if I say for one character in S, print ord of one character. And what do you know? These also have numbers, but you can see that these numbers are much, much larger. Right, that the ASCII characters are very small because they had to be from 0 to 127, and these numbers are actually a heck of a lot bigger. And if you get into other character sets, here, what well, if I say here S equals, and here we'll do in Chinese, Zhongwen, if I just say for Chinese, and I say here for one character in S, print the ord of one character. Now we've got really big numbers here. So this gives us all sorts of like issues and problems, like how can I, for example, right? how can I insert these characters into my strings, right? That's the big thing I want to talk about here. Well, in order to do that, I have to basically find out what special ways Python has to insert characters into strings, and then how I can take these ord numbers, these Unicode point numbers, code points, and translate them into that. Okay, so how is this going to work? Well, the easiest way is Right, I can use CHR, and CHR, and I remember using CHR back when I was a little kid and I was programming in BASIC. So I can say CHR of, let's go back up to one of those first things there, 97. CHR of 97 gives me lowercase a. CHR of 1513 gives me shin from Hebrew. CHR of 2013 gives me zhong, which is a uh, Chinese character. So basically, if I have this number that I got from ORD, I can use it with CHR and I can get that character. So if I want to, inside of my string, I could say here, you know, S equals, and this is going to be really ugly, but I can say here, CHR of 1513. Actually, I can't do that. I have to do it in F string, right? F string of CHR 1513. And then I'll say CHR of 1500. And then CHR of 1493. And then finally CHR of 1501. And I print that out and I get Shalom. It actually worked. But no one, no one, no one wants to write like this. So maybe we can make it a slightly better, nicer way to do things. And the answer is yes, we can. And Python provides us with a few different ways to do that. But those ways require that we use hexadecimal. We normally count on 10 fingers. We use decimal numbers, meaning base 10. But with computers, we typically use, often use hexadecimal. And hexadecimal um, is base 16. As people like to say, it's just like counting on, just like counting uh, decimal numbers, assuming you have 16 fingers. And so basically, hexadecimal numbers 
um, use digits 0 through 9 and then A through F. I know this sounds crazy if you've never used hex before. If you have used hex before, this is super obvious and you wonder why people get confused. Okay, don't wonder. It's confusing. In any event, what I can do is I can say, once again, if I say here, let's take uh, my hello from before or ABCDE, and I'm going to print this out here. But I'm not going to print the ORD of each character. I'm going to print the hex of ORD each character. And look at this. We have hexadecimal numbers here, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65. So if I want to insert this into my string, I can say here, print. And inside of my string, I don't even need an F string for this. I can just say backslash uh, X61. And look what I get. I get A. And I can say here, backslash X62, backslash X63, backslash X64, backslash X65. And what is it doing? Well, Python is basically saying backslash X and two hexadecimal characters, two hexadecimal digits. So we can get a Unicode character with two hex digits. That works pretty great. And that would be wonderful also for Hebrew, right? So let's do my Hebrew here. I have Shalom, right? So I'm going to grab this and I'll do the same sort of for loop here. And now I'm going to print out the hex for each of these characters. There's just a little problem here, which is these hex characters have more than two digits. What if I were to try to do that? What if I were to try to say here, backslash x 5e9, backslash x 5dc, backslash x 5d5, backslash x 5dd. And the answer is, ugh, not what I wanted, right? This is really gross. This is not at all what I wanted. And the problem is basically that backslash x only works if you have two hex digits. Well, if you have more than two hex digits, what do you do? Well, if, you, if your character will fit into uh, uh, four hex digits, you can use backslash little u. So I can say backslash little u, backslash little u. Now, that's not really going to work. In fact, it doesn't work at all. And the reason is that you really need to have those four characters, and if you have four digits. So if you don't have four digits, you have to put zeros at the beginning. And now I have my four characters, each of which has four hex digits. And look at that. It prints Shalom. So this is the letter Shim, and this is the letter Lamed, and this is the letter Vav, and this is the letter Mem, or the final Mem. Okay, so if your character will fit into two hex digits, you can use backslash X. If it'll fit into four hex digits, you can use backslash U. By the way, what if I want to use backslash U with these, right? Can I use backslash U with two digit, you know, hex codes? And the answer is yes, if you put two leading zeros. So if I say here, let's just erase this here and do backslash u, zero, zero, backslash u, zero, zero, backslash u, oops, didn't mean to do that, u, zero, zero, backslash u, zero, zero, backslash u, zero, zero, and it worked just fine. Fantastic. Well, you know where I'm going with this, right? What about our Chinese characters here? So I'm now going to print them out, but I'm not going to print the ord, I'm going to print the hex of the ord. And we see now that we have, well, four digits, actually, that's fine. Right, so I can do the same thing here. I can say here, print of backslash u 4e2d backslash u6587. And we are, oops, I guess a 432 4e2d. There we go. Okay, much better. But let's say I have another Unicode character, one that does not fit into four digits. What would not fit into four digits? Well, how about emojis? So I'm going to grab the fire emoji. And the fire emoji, I'm going to say here, S equals that. That is Unicode? That is a character? Absolutely, yes, it is. Absolutely. And so if I say ord of S, that's going to give me a number. And that's a big number, right? What if I say hex of ord of S? Yeah, that's bigger than four hex digits, all right. So what am I going to do? How am I going to print it? Right? If you have more than four hex digits, you can use backslash big U with eight hex digits. Yikes. So I can say here, print. I can say, I am on. And I can say, backslash big U. And I can say, 1F525. But I can't just do that. I have to fill it in. It has to have the full eight digits. So I'm going to have to say, if these are five digits, one, two, three. And guess what? I am on fire. Now, if you want to print these things, you can use backslash X, backslash little U, backslash big U. That works just fine. But there is another way to do it, too. 
And that is by using the names, the Unicode names for these characters. What do I mean Unicode names? Well, it turns out that every character in Unicode doesn't just have a number. It also has a name. Very sweet, right? You know, I'm not just a number, I'm also a name. What, what do I mean by that? Well, let's go back up here to my Hebrew. Actually, let's do it here with English. And I'm going to say here, for one character in S, and I'm not going to, I'm going to now say, import Unicode data. And this is a module that comes with a Python standard library. And now I'm not going to print out the hex of each character. I'm going to say, print me Unicode data dot name of one character. And look what I get here. Latin small letter A, Latin small letter B, Latin small letter C. Very uh, precise, very long. So how can I use this inside of a string? Well, I can say print. And then inside my string, I say backslash big N curly braces, Latin small letter A. And look at that, it's A. And you can do this you know, with all of them. By the way, don't really do this for like A and B and C because people will hate you. But if you don't mind that, C, and let's put D, let's even put E here. And what do you know? I have A, B, C, D, E, thanks to the magic of backslash big N, curly braces, the Unicode name. Now, this is obviously quite silly. What if I were to do this with Hebrew? So let's go back up here where I put this here. Okay, great. Scroll down, and now I can say, not hex and ord, I'm going to say Unicode data dot name of this character, Hebrew letter Sheen, Hebrew letter Lamed, Hebrew letter Vav, Hebrew letter Final Mem. And you can once again print those out. What about with Chinese? Well, let's do that. I'm going to say here, print Unicode data dot name of these characters. Oh, huh. CJK Unified Ideograph 4E2D. What the heck? Well, CJK stands for Chinese, Japanese, Korean, right? The Asian languages that have a lot of characters in them. Um, and I'm not sure exactly why, because I'm not privy to all these things, but I'm guessing that's because many of these characters are used by multiple languages and they have different uh, definitions, different pronunciations. So rather than start saying, this is pronounced this way, this means this, it's just gonna identify them by what? That's right, by the hex code. So could I then, if I wanted to say print backslash N, you know what I'm going to do here, right? I'm going to put this in here and then backslash N and then this was 6587. And yes, that actually does work. But again, don't do that. So where would you use this? I mean, you could use this with these things, but really it's way better, I think. Instead of saying I am on backslash big U, O, 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 1, F, 5, 2, 5, you can say I am on fire. And there you go. Okay, I hope this was interesting, fun, useful, and so on and so forth. If you liked it, then please subscribe. Don't forget, you can always reach out to me on Twitter, and you can also subscribe to my free weekly Better Developers newsletter about Python and software development. I will see you back here soon with another video about Python.